All right, chuffers, how's that diddling? Hope they're right. Today we're knocking out a batch of pens light and I'm going to talk you through all the strife I've had again. Sorry, what? This is available outside Yorkshire. Okay. Hey up everyone, how you diddling? No, is that? Sorry. Hi guys, how are you doing? So today we've got a video on pen turning. It's not traditional pen turning. It's uh, making the most of an inferior design, to be honest. The first week I got my Coronet Herald, we had an event coming up and I thought I want to produce something to sell at the event. So I knocked out some pens because spindle turning was the only thing I'd had a go at and the only thing I could have a go at with the tools and equipment I'd got at the time. I came up with a very simple design that utilised no kit, just used the insert from a biro and they all went, they all sold, they were really popular, that popular in fact, that uh, we got a, a regular return client from, from that event. Now with her we decided what her parameters were, her, the main attraction was the fact that they're made from reclaimed materials, locally sourced and they support the ethic of her company which we will link up here and down there open narrative um, today what we're going to show you is the entire process start to finish of producing one of the pens the battle I had was streamlining the process so that we could get them out in a time that was productive enough for us and for the client so that we can get the pens at a price point that suits the end customer now it's not perfect there are I'm sure better ways of doing it please do tell me in the comments um, but as with all of the things all of the crafts that we teach at making a better life the process is the point being active producing a physical item being engaged in your work and enjoying life whilst you live it that is the point and that is, that is something that we're we're really passionate about at making a better life you know hence the name making comma a better life and I'm sure all you makers out there can totally understand what we're getting at anyway let's get into turning the pen and I'll talk through some of the challenges we had to overcome and some of the things that we're still not quite happy with so without further ado let's get you down to the lathe so as you can see, I've already prepared some blanks here. I try to get them as uniform as possible, and, and if you do the same, perhaps get them a little neater than I can with my ancient bandsaw. Uh, I'm using a, an easy centre finder there, which I find the best on square blanks for just getting a dead centre mark. I then move on to a little impact centre punch and just mark up my centres there. And I do it on a batch of 20 to 50 blanks, depending on how long I've got and how big a batch of pens we're producing at the time. And then we mount up between centers. As you can see here, I'm using the, uh, the step drive from Sorbe. I particularly like this, and I've got a 60 degree cone center at the other end. Keep your lathe speed lower whilst you're rounding out the blank. I tend to stay below a thousand, then if anything does come off between the centers, it tends to go down as opposed to to your face. I'm using the uh, quarter inch Sorbe spindle roughing gouge here we are spindle turning so it's safe to use that and it hogs off uh, sorry three quarter inch spindle roughing gouge and it hogs off wood pretty quick as you can see i'm making short work of this blank getting it into round you will notice that i'm concentrating in a specific area here towards the tip of the pen that's because i'm going to use a steady rest to keep my blank in true whilst drilling and that's the area where the wheels of the steady rest are going to sit I'm now attaching the steady rest. This is a DIY one using roller blade wheels. Important point when bringing your wheels into contact with your blank, bring up your tail support. Then you know your blank's true and you're not pushing it out of the way with the wheels. Once your wheels are all tightened down and you're happy it's running free, you can switch out your tail stock support for your first Jacob's chuck. And I use a flat bladed drill to pilot this hole. So I'm drilling out to a maximum diameter of 4mm which is the chuck I'm switching out for now. It's a 
200 mil by 4 mil jobbing drill bit. It's difficult, it wants to wander. So to mitigate that, we use a peck drilling process. And I, after trial and error, I've discovered that drilling about 10 mil at a time is suitable. I then retract, clear the chip from the drill bit and repeat the process. Now, you are going to get losses with this method. There is flex in that drill bit. The only way you're really going to improve this is by having a routine. And my routine is the same every time. Peck drill for 10 mil at a time, retract, remove chip. Now, I have exactly 140 mil of the drill bit protruding from the chuck which means I know when I've reached appropriate depth which is the depth of the biro insert plus two mil to allow for any variation in the size of the insert. Another key consideration for uniformity in this process is your, your drilling speed. I tend to stick between 250 maybe possibly up to 300 in this oak 250 as close as I can get it every time and that's what works for me your experiences may differ experiment with it you'll get it right you could check out other people's videos but if you've got to this stage you should know the basics get your tool rest nice and square close to your work not too close make sure it turns freely and your tool rest height needs to be below center so that the cutting edge of the tool is bang on center I always start the pens the same by bringing down a rough outline of the tip. This gives me two things. One, it helps me bring up my template, as you can see here. Number two, it clears a little bit of space when, for when I'm detailing it later. Now that template's got two sides. One side is a diameter gauge, which you can see me using here to get the blank roughed out to its thickest diameter which is in the center I then tend to focus towards the tail end of the pen because if the drills wandered anywhere that's where I'm going to find the problem so on that template I've got little lines going from the place in the profile of the pen to where that diameter is so that diameter is in exactly the same place every time to say that it's a handmade item so yep, yeah, I've brought the tail down now and I'll also mark a point where I'm going to turn off the pen which gives me my ultimate length but I will stop at this stage and just check that the drill hasn't wandered through. First 20 or 30 pens I did, I didn't check this and I'll, I didn't start turning at the end and it was really annoying when you got a pen all finished and polished with the lathe turning and then realised that the drill bit had wandered and you've got a great big hole wandering out the tail of it. The template's easy to make. Once the client was happy with the design of the pen, what we did is brought one, brought the one they decided on home, drew round it on paper, stuck that paper to a piece of, I think that's MDF, very thin MDF or hardboard, and cut that profile out. And on the opposite side, cut the diameter gauges. There you can see I've checked it. This one's fine, we're ready to continue. So just keep offering up that profile guide. I keep it in my, uh, my weak hand. I've now moved to the tip, again, to establish the correct diameter before putting any major detail in. One thing you'll see me doing throughout this process is I'll go between a push cut, a scraping cut and a peeling cut. You may not see it. Uh, there you see it, yeah. I've gone to a peeling cut there with the wing. I believe this is a quarter inch. So be bowl gouge, my favorite tool as it happens. See those, those peeling complaining cuts are great. I can waste off a lot of wood get myself into the right diameter using a peeling cut which is where i'm presenting the wing around the center line i can then roll the bevel of the wing up onto the top and create a planing cut which gives me a much smoother finish 
and when I'm close I'll go to a push cut with good bevel contact and I do allow for the fact that I like to sand these pens get a really nice finish so for expedience sake I'm not bothered, bothered that my final cuts are perfect just not too many tool marks good to keep a clean work area I spend a little time neatening up the end not taking it too thin because I want enough wood still in contact with my chucking point that I don't rip the blank off like I have before while sanding there's that planing cut again it's basically using the wing as a skew and so easy to then switch back into a push cut this white oak which is a reclaimed kitchen floor is a little fractious Again on my template I've got marked the points where the grooves in the pens lie and I'm just using a DIY point tool made from an old screwdriver here to, to establish those grooves. So easy to make a point tool, just gr grind round stock with three, three flats, 60 degrees each. And you can keep touching it up on a diamond card before taking it back to the wheel. It's actually a really handy tool. You can push up and ride the bevel like a small skew. I can turn beads with them and, and all sorts. I then start off with a 240 grit wet and dry paper. It doesn't matter what type of abrasive you use really, just 240 I find is enough to take out the tool marks that I've left. Just get those contours nice and smooth. You don't want to sand too heavily or too fast. I tend to sand it around five to seven hundred rpm don't want to do too much with the 240 grit because you're just taking away from those grooves like i say it's just getting out any tool marks and creating nice smooth contours we are going to step up the sanding to some finer grits and finish off with a wire wool little safety point if you've got a really strong sandpaper like this which is almost plastic backed Hold it in a way that it'll pull out of your hands. You don't want to drag a finger into your work. Admittedly with this work it will snap before your finger does. Well at least before my finger does. I have done it. Tool rest out of the way. Don't want to risk catching on that. Don't want too much heat in the blank. As you can see here I've switched to the 400 grit. This isn't for profiling. This is just for bringing to a closer shine. As you can see I'm working a bit quicker with it. Ripping it and dropping it like I have been known to. It's good exercise. Yeah, I've switched to the wire wool here. Uh, I normally rub, roll it between my hands because those little wispy bits will catch, particularly near your tail stock and your head stock where there are little, uh, little minute chips still. I'm trying to get my fingernails slightly into these grooves to clear them out a bit. Of course, it's worth wiping or blowing off your blank between each grit to get any residual abrasive off there because otherwise you're just bound to leave scratches. Also really important with the wire wool to have your speed n not too high on the lower end of whatever your comfortable sanding speeds are because it will very quickly get hot and burn your work which we don't want. This blank obviously had a small problem in it and I stepped back up to the 400 and then took that back out again almost burnishing it with that wire wool. You could use some chips depending on uh, how many chips you've got laying under your lathe at the time. Wire wool will drag your hand in and hurt you, so do hold it in a way that that's not going to happen. This isn't a safety video. Look elsewhere, do your due diligence. The lathe can be dangerous. Not if you respect it. It'll be your friend. So a bit of shop towel or whatever you prefer to use to protect your lathe bed. I'm now going to use some DIY shine juice, which is just a mix of, uh, of shellac. I can't tell you what mixture, I do it different every time. And well, I do it by eye, and that's as accurate as I need to be really. That's mixed with tongue oil, I think, in this instance. I turn the lathe down to the lowest speed on this belt, which is 140 RPM. That way I can apply a really liberal coat for my first coat and not have it splatter all over the workshop. Oh, excuse me. 
in again. I then rip off that paper or move to a fresh, fresh area of damp paper. Turn my speed back up to the highest speed on this spindle and buff it out. And the heat is what sets this sealer. Shine Dew Sanding Sealer. People will call it different things depending on where in the world they're from. I repeat this two, three, four times. Each blank's different. Each blank, blank will absorb slightly more or less. But I'm just going for a, a level of luster that I've got set in my mind as a quality control. Important to tear off and use a new piece of shop towel or safety cloth each time because as it sets on the pen with the friction, it also sets on the cloth and you can easily introduce scratches that way. You'll probably see me uh, slipping a fingernail into the grooves there. That's to make sure that we've got an even coat in the grooves and that we're not building up too much there because it won't set as quick and it'll just show up as a terrible, terrible, horrible white mess usually. I'm applying pressure there, enough that you feel the heat in your fingers but not enough that you burn your fingers. That's usually an indicator you've gone slightly too far. What I tend to do when I'm putting multiple coats on is I alternate between applying a lot of pressure and friction and a gentle movement and an amount of time for it to dry. So with a gentle movement you're applying a thicker coat with the pressure you're setting that coat. You may want to use a bamboo stick or something like a skewer to clean out grooves as opposed to your fingernail but my fingernails have had enough hammer that they're uh, strong enough to deal with this. So we decided we want a slightly matter finish on our pens and to stay with the ethos of both our company and open narrative who we make this specific design of pen for, we went with beeswax. That's because a community allotment that we're involved with has an apiary and any of their wax that is deemed not clean enough for making candles and, and other products, we take and we filter it to the point that it's useful for finishes. It's not as hard wearing as Carnot Bromac or Crystalline Wax, but it gives it a nice feel to the pen. And as you can see here, I'm just rotating the pen at high speed and allowing friction to take a little wax off, and then buffing that out with a clean piece of shop towel. Two or three coats is usually enough. Right, so it's getting close to time to part off. I like to come in with a skew and take the tip of the pen to its final profile, just nice and neat down to the point I then remove the tail stock because you don't want to part off between centers if you're ambidextrous uh, part off left-handed or am I got my arms crossed there I have haven't I so I find it quite easy with a skew to get a nice smooth finish oh there you are ambidextrous and just roll roll the tail of the pen down like a bevel I'm just switching between creating space and and taking it off there Fine with this way, just a couple of little passes with sandpaper will remove any nibs and give you a really nice clean tail end to the pen. You could part off with a parting tool, but it's good practice to use the skew. So yeah, as you can see here, a little bit of the 400 is all it needs just to clean off that tail end. It's less removing any nibs as just blending the rest of the sanding work that we've already done. Again bit of friction with the wire wall and that'll do. The same at the tip which often doesn't need much sanding at all. It's, it's again it's just blending. Yeah what you see me here do is getting the airline to blow any chips out because I've already offered it up to my face and blown in it and realized I'm wearing a full face shield. Doofus. Same process as before but just using the friction of your hands rubbing a little bit of the sanding sealer it doesn't need as many coats and then a little bit of wax and that's usually uh, all it needs to finish the tip and the tail off. Slip in the insert and then the all important flick test. If the insert goes flying out wrap a little little sliver of sellotape around the thick part of the insert and, and that's what I'll do until it doesn't fly out with the flick test. There you are, check the insert, that's your pen. I get a batch together and then they're off to open narrative to be sold on their website and we can do bespoke custom designs for you if you'd like and again made out of recycled products so thanks for watching guys see you next time mm -hmm.